Hello everybody, I'm Dan A. Montague King, the founder of DMK International. And over the last 50 years, I've done a huge amount of study on a subject that plagues a lot of men and a lot of women, and mostly women, all over the world. And this is called hyperpigmentation, or dark spots. There are two categories of hyperpigmentation most people are not aware of. There's the inflammatory type and the passive type, or combinations of both. Now, the inflammatory type is when you go out in the sun and you get a terrible sunburn and you end up with dark spots, freckles, or even what you call a tan. The old adage, a healthy tan, it really is not healthy. And when I explain what hyperpigmentation really is, you'll understand why laying out in the sun to get a dark tan is not healthy. But anyway, back to the two categories. Passive is hormonal. Some women, when they have their first baby, they end up with a cloasma or butterfly, dark area across the nose. Others get it large patches around the face. Okay. Uh, women that pass menopause and become a little bit older end up with melasmas, large dark spots. And sometimes those can even raise up a little bit and they become what we call lentigos or lentigines. There's all kinds of manifestations of pigmentation. Sometimes people have pigmentation for another reason. Now, this is rare, but we have addressed it, and it does come up, and it's from skin funguses, one of them called malassezia, where large areas of the skin appear very dark, and yet one microbiome treatment, it's gone. So this isn't really hyperpigmentation in the classical sense, but it is a small category. Now, what does it look like? Well, I just described. You can have dark spots that are large. You can have just uneven skin tone. Many people in the black community have very dark areas across the top of the forehead. This is usually from different types of hair straightening processes or other things that create a trauma. All right. Uh, sometimes it can just be a general tone that's not even. Uh, the neck can be very dark and the face bright. Basically, the cause of all hyperpigmentation is the fact that it is a defense mechanism of the skin. We have little cells inside of our skin called melanocytes, all right? And their job is to rush to the surface and turn dark to protect cells from breaking down from sun radiation or other kinds of trauma, all right? That's their job. They're a defense mechanism. Sometimes they come up irregularly, other times they come up more of an even effect like you would see in a tan. Uh, what we consider them is the good boys, but the good boys can look like the bad boys when it's not attractive when you look in the mirror. Okay? How do we treat it? Well, the popular approach to treating hyperpigmentation many, 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 many years ago was to bleach it with uh, hydroquinone. Hydroquinone can become very toxic. Uh, people have ended up with hydro hydroquinone poisoning. Uh, a very big pop star who's now no longer with us uh, was a victim of this. Uh, at many times people would see him in photographs and he'd have little tapes on his all the time. This is a sure sign of hydroquinone poisoning, using way too much and way too high of a percentage of hydroquinone. I never approached it that way. My, my approach uh, for DMK when I founded it, and I did a lot of research on this. I spent a great deal of time in South Africa amongst the townships with people that had various types of hyperpigmentation. Uh, African skin is predisposed to hyperpigmentation. In other words, genetically, uh, they're not supposed to suffer as much from hyperpigmentation by virtue of their own pigmentation. But over the centuries and over the years, this has changed as the ozone layer around the Earth it starts to go away. And the sun, uh, the sun rays that come through now are much more irritating to uh, the DNA of skin cells. And we have all kinds of basal cell carcinoma and other cancers and, and anomalies just from that aspect. So nobody on the planet now, just no matter how deep their tone is naturally, is predisposed against hyperpigmentation. Almost everybody has a problem with it. So I approached it through many, many, many years of testing and research by stopping the pigmentation in the basal cells of the skin before it even gets up to the surface. All right, we call the, these processes inhibitors. 
So we have many, many different types of inhibitors in our treatments and in our home prescriptive products. We also have found a way to stop pigmentation at the inception of where it's made. It's, it's actually developed in a little organelle in the skin called a Golgi apparatus. Think of it as a sort of a oh, warehouse that stores everything that's supposed to be used by the skin cell, including the pigment that makes pigmentation. Uh, what happens is if there's some kind of a trauma on the surface, whether it be a sunburn, whether it be chemical burn, whether it be a smack in the face, whether it be a hormonal change in your body, uh, the Golgi apparatus releases some of that material into the melanosome, goes to the melanocyte, and then to the melanin cell itself up in the epidermis, which then travels up and turns dark on the skin. So we've found ways to stop it right at its inception and also inhibit it. Uh, looking at the uh, tyrosine and tyrosinase, tyros tyrosinase is an enzyme and tyrosine is an amino acid. Think of them as man and wife, and they're making love, and they, the end product of that is a baby. And uh, think of that baby as melanin. So if you can put something in between them while they're in the bed, I know that sounds funny, but just a good analogy, uh, no baby is produced, uh, and so there's no melanin. So we address it from that point as well. So now we've got two ways to absolutely stop pigmentation before it arrives. Now, what about the pigmentation on the surface? Well, most of that is old melanin that's just caught up in the redundant cuticle. In other words, the excessive corneum or dead dry cells. We, we have many, many ways to remove that pretty quickly. But it only makes common sense to me that while we're removing with our various treatments, we're also stopping it down below so it can't come up anymore. So now you've got two attacks, one from the outside and one from inside. And when the skin resumes its natural color, the pigmentation is gone and controllable. There is no reason in the world people have to suffer any kind of hyperpigmentation. Um, I won't say that uh, the darker ones or the deeper ones um, are easy to get rid of. We have many, many people from uh, India where it really, really comes up bad. And a lot of Indian women, particularly wealthy ones that I've met, here at our London clinic and here in LA and other places. Uh, they spent a lot of money on all kinds of laser treatments and, and Fraxel and all kinds of intense treatments trying to get rid of their hyperpigmentation. And it, is, it ends up being even worse. And uh, how do you address that? Well, when they come into our clinics, if I happen to be traveling around the world and I'm in town, sometimes I visit our clinics and they bring their worst their worst clients to me for some reason. Uh, I, I have to be honest with them. I have to say, look, uh, it's going to take time to get rid of this. We can do it, but it will take a little time to chip away at that pigmentation that's caught up in the epithelium and stop it from the lower levels. In the meantime, I created quite some time ago a silicone foundation that allows your skin to respirate on its own. It has absolutely no oil in it. It covers everything. It doesn't move no matter what kind of activity that you engage in, even in sports. We've had a lot of men, a lot of men wearing it when they go play soccer or all kinds of things that have acne pigmentation. You know, sometimes with acne, you get that sort of purpley brown look and scarred look. And they're able to cover this without anybody noticing. It doesn't look like makeup at all. It looks like your own skin, actually, uh, while they're going through the series of treatments so they can look good right away. There's no reason why someone shouldn't look good right away, even though they're having an ongoing series of professional treatments. And in the end, the skin is back to its normal tone. So to tie this all together, what we do is we remove the surface cuticle and damage. Okay? We start rebuilding the cellular structure underneath, the new baby cells. We always have them coming to the surface. Then we protect from further damage. Obviously, if you're having hyperpigmentation, you're not going to get a good result and then go, oh, well, I can go out in the sun again. I can go sit by the pool. No, no, no. You cannot do that. You have to give yourself a chance, okay? And then maintain for the rest of your life by what you do at home. Anything at all that is a skin anomaly can be treated by a DMK procedure. 
for the last 50 years, we have done some remarkable things that even I, when I see uh, the before and after shots and the different uh, doctors and different therapists around the world send us their work, I, I sit there and amazed uh, of how many incredible successes can be achieved just simply by professional treatment and the proper home prescriptives. Thank you. Thank you.